you know, the thing that's really shocking about all of this is this is not a side uh, horror show from the leak of these documents. I mean, in my mind, this is was essentially the goal of the leak of these documents yes. to, at the very least, intimidate these uh, Supreme Court justices. And at the worst, maybe this hoping someone like this could be successful and, uh, you know, overturn what could be coming with Roe versus Wade. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, 100% agree. 100% agree. This is um, the left's playbook. Um, it's always a win-win. Um, you'll see it. We talked to Josh Hammer today, and he mentioned this. We'll see it um, happen the same exact way when they find the leaker. It's impossible for me to believe that they haven't found the person who has leaked um, M uh, Mike Lee told me he thought that it was going to be released after all of the court cases. They will say, we found the leaker. Here's who they are. Uh, and they're never going to practice law again. But you watch that person will go on to some great job, may not be in law, but maybe they're a legal analyst, you know, a, a legal uh, analyst for NBC or or something like that. They have applauded that person and this is what comes from that. This is, I believe, what they wanted. This is terrorism. They are trying to intimidate people to be able to get the outcome politically of what they want. That's the definition of terrorism. And these sorts of organizations sh are the type that, if you judge by social media terms of service, should be being banned. I mean, there are organizations that are bragging about protesting out in front of Brett Kavanaugh's house and have been doing this for months and months and months. And we see the comments by people like Chuck Schumer, who said something about the Supreme Court that is much, much worse than anything Donald Trump said about January 6th. It's not even close. Trump's off Twitter forever. Schumer continues to run his mouth. I mean, is there any chance, maybe with Elon Musk coming in, uh, that we'll see some sort of uh, equality when it comes to the way they enforce these policies? I hope so, but I, I've given up on uh, common sense and the right thing being done. Um, we just have to do the right thing in our in our own lives. That's why when I talk to this guy, it's like, do you condone the violence? Do you, uh, uh, you know, where do you stand on violence? And he's like, protect yourself, yes, and take a stand. But violence, no. Mm. Um, and violence is the worst thing that could happen. You know, the what's happening to us right now is what happened with um, John Wilkes Booth and Lincoln. He he didn't just hate Lincoln. He wanted to get the North really upset and say, we got to go down and finish them off. We got it because he thought that they surrendered, the, the South did, and that they shouldn't have. And so if the um, if the North would get really upset, they would come down and just start slaughtering and the ri the rise of the South and they had a chance to win. That's why he killed Abraham Lincoln. Uh, it wasn't just driven by hatred of the man. He wanted a war to be picked up again. And I think that's what's happening. Um, I think the left wants a war inside of America. They want our side to strike out. Um, and boy, I tell you, if they would have killed Kavanaugh mm. or anybody else, uh, and then there's, a, you know, we were talking about it earlier today. There is no precedent for this um, other than Scalia dying. And um, he was just his decision was taken off. If they kill one of these uh, Supreme Court justices before the decision is rendered, uh, you you may have it go the other direction, um, which is extraordinarily terrifying because people would be tempted to say oh i don't know uh that's uh more than sedition that's treason and terrorism mm. and uh, the thing we have to remember is abraham lincoln with malice toward none and charity toward all let us bind the wounds of this nation because if we get mad and strike back it's over it's over